Hello from Ash virtually reporting here, Michelle Nadine Baker. It's another action packed day filled with news from the American Society of Hematology Annual Conference. There are just so many exciting trials presented. One of these is the Sequoia trial, which some of you may remember from other ashes and my reporting on it. But this one compares more traditional treatment Bendamustine and rituximab with xanabrutinib. That is a bruton tyrosine kinase inhibitor, a BTKI, BTKI inhib, which is an inhibitor. This is the same class of drug as abrutinib, which many of us have been on, or some of you are still on it. Um, and it was the first major breakthrough in CLL treatment in recent years. Uh, and now since then, uh, it's become the standard of care for CLL patients, which is huge. And that's being tested in all other, a bunch of other trials too, which I'll be reporting on. But, you know, there's the next BTKI, which is a calibertinib or calquince, which I know some of you are on, and I currently am on that. And then there's the next generation, which we're talking about here, xanabrutinib another BTKI, just to give you a little background. So, and there are even more BTKIs in the pipeline and more on one in particular later on in this report. So Constantine Tam, a very impressive doc from Melbourne, Australia, presented these spectacular trial results comparing xanabrutinib with bendamustine and rituxan, which some of you um, have been treated with one, both uh, of these, or be, maybe you're on the trial. Conclusion stated that xanabrutinib showed superiority across high risk patients. This is great news for all of you out there who are high risk. There's very high progression free survival, including for patients with 17P deletion, as well as patients like myself with unmutated IGHV, those with 11Q. Uh, there's a very clear advantage for them with xanabrutinib. And there, on top of this, there's a lower risk of AFib and hypertension, which is no, uh, known uh, side effects from some of the BTKI, and inhi um, the inhibitors. Now, there are other trials that are going on with xanabrutinib, some of which are being reported. Um, and one is comparing it head to head with abrutinib. And this also shows that xanabrutinib is associated with a lower rate of AFib. Now, word on the street is that xanabrutinib could be approved within the next year, but for a different disease, but it could be prescribed off-label for CLL patients. So this is pretty good news, huh? Uh, so the next BTKI is pirtobrutinib. Now, this one is, is pretty darn new out there. It's in trial. It's, it's different than these other BTKIs in that it's um, called a non-covalent BTK inhibitor. Now, those others I was talking about that some of us have been on, those are considered covalent. Non-covalent is more selective, it's reversible, uh, and the ones, the others, again, are covalent with, with a peer to it being non-covalent. Now, Dr. Anthony Matto of Memorial of Sloan Kettering presented early results from what's called the Bruin trial, and this is uh, with peer Brutinib, very promising efficacy in CLL and SLL patients who were previously treated with other BTK inhibitors. This trial was for high risk patients. That's how it's being tested right now in this particular trial. And what it means for patients who are in the trial pyrobrutinib, pure tobrutinib, was uh, for patients who have been resistant or intolerant or become intolerant on other BTKIs, uh, they did very well on pyrotrobrutinib. Uh, someday I'll be able to say that correctly. <laughs> yeah, the favorable safety and tolerability. Matto said it's been extremely well tolerated, but there are still lots of questions on this. It's very early on, and there are many other trials ongoing evaluating pyrotrobrutinib combinations. So with more on other trials being reported from ASH, stay tuned here. And this is Michelle Nadine reporting for you. There is so much hope for us as CLL patients with all of these drugs in the pipeline and being researched.